Hi everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Buckaroo Designs and I have a special guest with me today. This is Addie, you're kind of short. You stand on your tippy toes, there we go. This is Addie, she's my youngest daughter and she's gonna help me here in just, just the beginning and then she's gonna sneak away. Look, there we are. She's gonna sneak back away. I She wants to be a YouTuber when she grows up so I said, why don't you try being on the live with me and see how it feels. Feels a little weird, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We can see ourselves right there. And uh, look, see, someone's saying hi to you. Hi, Gina. <laughs> see, it's a delay. She's looking at herself down here on the iPad, but it, it's about an eight second delay. It's very strange. So anyways, she's gonna help me do door prizes and um, say hello and kind of see if this is really what she wants to do when she grows up. <laughs> Sometimes she comments on my YouTube videos. You guys might see it. Her YouTube name is Bunny Legit, Bunny Legit Swag. <laughs> so if you ever see <laughs> silly comments from Bunny Legit, you'll know it's Addie. So anyway, all right, so today, before we do door prizes, let me just tell you what we're doing today while we wait for everybody to join. Um, garden goodness, what do you think about that stamp set? Yeah, some people don't like it. I've been hearing that some people don't like the stamp set, but I'm here to change your mind today. I've got some really cute um, projects. Andrea says her 10 year old boy wants to be a YouTuber too. That's how old Addie is, she's 10. And she's here today with me all alone. Her big sisters have gone off to a retreat, so she's got the house and mama to herself. All right, so do you see everybody mm -hmm. saying hi? Um, okay, so. Hello, ladies. Good. I'm glad you've joined us today. Thank you. So last week, um, I had two prizes, and Addie's going to hold them up, and I'll tell you who won. All right, you want to hold one up? First one is, hold it a little bit higher, Elizabeth Merkel. Elizabeth, congratulations. Daisy Lane. Elizabeth, I don't know if I have your mailing address or not, so if you'll email me, that'll make it quicker. Um, let Debbie's saying hello to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now do this one right here. And the next prize is for Debbie Hughes. And Debbie, I definitely have your mailing address. So thank you, Debbie and Elizabeth. Um, you can win by sharing the video on Facebook or going over to the raffle copter, which I don't have this week. This week's prize will only be for sharing, but one of them shared and one of them did raffle copter. I don't remember which one. So ladies, congratulations. Um, I will get your prizes out shortly. Let's see, what else are they saying? My seven-year-old wants his own channel. Yes, we've had that discussion many times. She wants her own channel, and we've actually looked into it, but she's not old enough. We're gonna wait a few years on that. I don't know if you guys know, but the kids like to watch other kids play video games online. Um, that's what she spends the majority of her time doing is watching other kids play video games when she's not playing video games. What video games do you like to play? Fortnite. Mm -hmm. Fortnite. But what have you been playing Roblox. since Roblox? But the other one this summer, you've been back to what? Um, Minecraft. Minecraft. Minecraft's an oldie but goodie, and she's back to Minecraft this year or this summer. Okay, hold up this one. This is our prize. This is a big prize. Let them see it. Well said. Pull that one out so they can see that too. This is, we're going to do one prize this week. It's the Well Said Bundle. And that's a really expensive prize. So the only way to win this is to share the video. Um, so if you wanna win, share it on Facebook. Okay, Miss Addie, high five. Thank you for helping. You can go play, thank you. And I'll be done in about an hour, okay? okay. Love you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so, oh, and Addie, the dogs are in here. So if you hear them barking, come save me, okay? Okay. Charlie's sleeping right here. But as soon as he hears somebody come in that cul-de-sac, you will hear him. Okay. Um, so anyways, thanks, you guys, for sharing the video and for saying hello to Addie. Um, she's, she is very cute. She's a cutie. I agree. She is my baby at 10. She's the baby of the family, and she likes being the baby. Let me tell you. Okay, so let's see. Before I flip the camera around, let me tell you a couple of things. It starts with Art Class to Go. Registration is open. This class has six projects, and it comes with or without the bundle, but everybody will get a full embellishment kit because you'll need those for your projects. And the deadline on this is July 19th. Now, I do want to tell you that next week, my husband and I leave for Greece. Well, we're actually going to Italy first, spending a few days in Italy, and then we are going and doing a Greek Isles uh, cruise with the rest of the Stampin' Up! 
uh, trip achievers. So I will actually be gone for the next two Fridays, two Facebook Fridays. However, I have planned ahead and I have Facebook Friday, the next two Facebook Fridays already planned and I'm going to film them hopefully this weekend. And so Facebook Fridays will still happen while I'm gone. They just won't be live. Um, and I'm going to have a very special ordering incentive while I'm gone. Um, the only problem with doing Facebook Fridays while I'm gone is that I can't cut the make and takes for you and send them to you um, because I'll be gone. And then when I come back, it'll be crazy. So I'll have something really special uh, for anybody who orders while I'm gone. That'll also be connected with Facebook Fridays. Uh, we are going to do... Let's see, I can't even remember the names of the stamp sets now, so I'm not gonna tell you. It's gonna be a surprise, but they're very, very cute. Um, okay, so this, this is the last time I'm gonna remind you probably of this because I'm leaving and the deadline is right after I get back. So if you want this class, make sure you email me um, and I will, or message me and I will send you that link. Remember, I can't post that registration link directly on social media or my blog, it's stamping up rules. Um, so the only way I can give it to you is send it to you in an email. It always goes out in my newsletter. So if you um, aren't subscribed to my newsletter, make sure you have that too, or that you have done that. Um, the other, <clears throat> excuse me, the other announcement is the J June All-Star Tutorial Bundle. Um, you get this for free with every $50. Uh, or when you spend $50 um, with me online, stampinup.com, um, that kind of order. And um, 12 tutorials in here this month. I don't have my project anymore. I don't know where it went, um, but I'll show you. 12 different project tutorials um, by 12 different Stampin' Up! demonstrators. And this is free. I email it to anybody who spends uh, $50 with me. Uh, now, while I'm gone, I will be checking email some. Oh, the volume is low. Good, Terry. Thank you for telling me that because, look, my microphone. Let's try that, see if that helps. So while I'm gone, I'm gonna be some, you guys, um, but but not a lot, because we're gonna be out of the country and in um, Europe. So I'm gonna try to check it some. Um, I probably will post pictures here on this Facebook group as we go, um, but it's gonna be vacation. I'm gonna try to enjoy vacation. So please be patient with me over the next two weeks um, as we travel. And um, just know that I'm not ignoring you, but I will get back with you by the time I get back or you know, in and out while we're writing through, you know, to and for, to and from, I will try to answer some of that, okay? Okay, so this, this one is done this weekend. We have a new one coming out on Monday. Now, Monday is July 1st, and there's some really important things I need to tell you about July 1st. Stampin' Up! announced this week that they are going to have a starter kit special all of July and all of August. The starter kit, now it's on, all the details are right here on this PDF, which is over at pinkbuckaroo.com. All starter kits will include $30 extra in product. So you'll be getting $155 in product for $99, free shipping, hello. And then you get an additional $10 coupon to spend the following month. So if you buy that starter kit in July, that coupon will come the first week of August for you. So really, it's $165 in product for $99. That's amazing. We've had um, recruiting specials or starter kit specials in the summer before, but this one is really good. And it's not just gonna be in July, which is normally what happens. It's July and August. So if you've been thinking about that starter kit, you really need to look at these details, look at what you would get for $155. Um, and if you want to do that, I have the link on this PDF, and you need to wait till July 1st, because that special doesn't start until July 1st. Um, and then also you can go over to my blog and find out all the amazing benefits of buying that starter kit. You then get a 20% discount on all your Stampin' Up! purchases. Um, you get all my PDFs for free. My team gets all of them for free. You get my my class to goes at a very, very uh, deep discounted price. So there's lots of really good benefits. 
And you'll have access to that holiday catalog early, which is always one of our favorite perks. So if you're interested in that starter kit, make sure you click on that link or copy and paste over um, to find out the details, okay? All right, Debbie, I see you're watching from the farmer's market. Well, good, because I have a perfect stamp set for you today. Farmer's market, this just screams farmer's market. And I am a little mad at those of you who don't like this stamp set. I've been hearing a lot of funny things online about that stamp set. Um, okay, one more thing, and then I'm gonna flip the camera around. Bonus days begin Monday. Um, if you have been a customer for a while, you know that last year we did bonus days. Um, it's kind of, I, I equate it to gym bucks. When my girls were little, we went to Gymboree and you could earn gym bucks and then you had a time where you could go um, spend them. But that's basically what this is. For every $50 you spend, Stampin' Up! sends you a code for a $5 coupon to spend in August. And they're cumulative. So you could like, you know, rack up a bunch of them and then spend all of them at the same time the following month. They're not, there's no like weird limits or anything. So, you know, you could get four or five of them and then you'd be able to spend them on an order the next month. So that's awesome. So if you want to take advantage of bonus days, wait till Monday to put in your Facebook Friday order. Okay. Okay. I think that's it. We're ready. If you haven't joined me for Facebook Friday before, and I forgot to pull out our make and take packs. Oh, I think I have some right over here. Yep. If you haven't joined me before for Facebook Friday, I do three projects and I will send the make and takes to you for free in the mail if you put in an order, minimum $30 order by Monday at midnight. There's a host code attached to it. Um, this is kind of like a, a class, a free class with purchase. Um, and it, there's a host code so that I know, where is it, right here, so that I know that you want these projects. Um, so any order, above $30 that use that host code between now and Monday at midnight. I'm going to send you these make and takes for free. Okay. Here's last week's. The little truck was so cute. Those went out two days ago. So those of you who ordered, thank you. By the way, I have a huge thank you to tell you guys. Um, you might have seen somebody posted it here on our Facebook group earlier today. In May, we had this um, sales challenge for Rooted in Nature. And if you remember, I did four projects that week. And I um, encouraged you to order the Rooted in Nature. It was very exciting. We we're having a sales contest. Well, we found out this week that, that oh, whether the prize is that they're going to plant a tree in your honor for the top three um, who sold the Rooted in Nature stamp set, and I found out that I won. So thank you guys. That really just does prove to me that my customers truly are the best. I mean, I shouldn't say I won, we won, because you guys helped me. You you ordered those beautiful Rooted in Nature stamp sets. So thank you all very much. That was a fun little contest for us, and to know that a tree is being planted in my honor is a really big deal. So thank you so much, you guys. Anyways, okay, moving on, let's start stamping. And Patty's so funny. You're, you're funny, Patty. You're always my biggest cheerleader, Patty. Thank you. You're so sweet. All right. So close your eyes. If you get see phone down. And let me turn this around. Now, I read several places that this was somebody's least favorite stamp set in the catalog. And I just, oh, my feelings are hurt. No, not really. I didn't design the stamp set, so my feelings weren't hurt. But I just can't believe it, you guys. It's so cute. It is so cute. You know me, and I love to come up with, like, gifts and treats and stuff. So, of course, this one was like a challenge, you know. Um, what can we find that we could use this stamp set on? And, of course, I found lots of goodies. We went to all the stores this week. <laughs> my daughters and I, we went to Target, we went to Walmart, we went to CVS, we went to Amazon, we went all over the place to find some fun treats. So that's what I've done. And um, I think you're going to like it. If you thought it was weird, you won't think it's weird by the time we're done today. Okay. Okay, so we're going to make a card and two gift holders. We're going to save those for last. We're going to go from the simplest to the more difficult, okay? Now, if you go over to pinkbuckaroo.com, you'll find this PDF. Today, the post is up. I think someone just said that you saw these posts already 
Um, I, I had set it to go at one, so hopefully it's up. Um, under the fourth photo, you'll find this, a link to this. You click it, it's yours. Save it, print it, do whatever you want. Everything that you need, everything that I'm using is listed here along with the measurements. And then all of those announcements that I just told you are there in case you want more details. Okay? Okay, I think we're ready. Let me move all of this out of the way. And let's get started. So this is one of our distinctive stamps. Um, distinctive means that it's, I, I have a hard time verbalizing what that means. It means that it looks like it's very detailed with layers and shadows, but it's just one stamp um, that creates that. You know, a lot of times in, in the past to create stamps like that or images like that, we had to do several layers of stamping and this is just one stamp. And so, um, it's just a flat stamp, but you can see it kind of has these laser etched um, details in it that create that shading and um, that three dimensional look. So that's what this stamp set is in case you're wondering. And you'll notice too, like the lighter spots, that's supposed to be there. You know, if you look at it, it's supposed to be there. It's, sh it's like um, shading and shadows. All right, so we're gonna start with a card first with the bell peppers. Um, I will admit that I don't like bell peppers at all. Yuck. However, they are beautiful. I really do like the colors. Um, so actually, this was the very first thing that I created with this stamp set because the colors are so beautiful. Okay, let me get organized. I've got stuff all over the place. Oops, sorry, I just moved the camera. Okay, okay. We're going to stamp the bell pepper twice. First, we're going to do it in Mango Melody, which is quickly becoming one of my most favorite colors. It's an orangey yellow. It's more orange than yellow, but it's just beautiful. And then clean your stamp. I didn't stamp that very well. I re-inked my pad and I think it's too juicy. So let's do something. Um, let's see, where's my bone folder? My friend, and I told you guys this before, my friend Ange McKay, she did a presentation at um, on stage with distinctive stamps. And she said, if you're not getting a good image, take your bone folder and just scrape your pad a little bit, set that in a safe spot, and then try it again. Sometimes we need to get some of that ink out of there. Oh, beautiful. See the difference? I scraped the pad so it wasn't so juicy because it was so juicy that you lose some of that detail. All right, so that work, that seems to work for me every time if I have a, an um, issue with a stamp. All right, now we're gonna do real red. And let's do that. Ooh, beautiful. That red stamps really well. Then we're gonna get, you know, I have a giant table, but somehow I, work myself into this tiny little area every time. I don't know why that is. Okay, here's the stem. Oh, I did this earlier. I didn't stamp it low enough. Well, I guess it fits. Leave enough room for your bell pepper stem. All right, so those of you, let me see what you're saying. Do you like bell peppers? Raise your hand. It's like I'm in class, guys. Once a teacher, always a teacher. I want to like bell peppers a lot. Here in South Texas, we eat fajitas a lot. It's our like our favorite thing. <laughs> we have fajitas about once a week, um, which is, if you don't know what fajitas are, it's, um, you know, Mexican food um, where they take chicken or beef and they bring it out to you on like a sizzling, you know, sizzling pan. And it's with onions and bell peppers. And I don't like the bell peppers. My husband likes them, but I'm always like, ooh, no, thank you. Um, but I want to like them because they're pretty. And my mom, I don't know if my mom's watching today, she used to make stuffed bell peppers. And I loved the stuffing, <laughs> the rice and stuff on the inside. I didn't want the pepper. I just want the rice. I would probably be in much better shape if I liked more vegetables. Not that I don't like vegetables, but I just don't like a lot of them. Bell peppers being one. Let's see, what are you guys saying? You don't like green, but you like the other colors. Jill, I've heard people say that before. Yeah, I've heard people say that before. And I have not spent time trying to tell the difference. I mean, they smell the same to me because I have bought them and I have cooked with them. 
Um, when we do fajitas, like for a party or something fancy, I get colorful. They're more expensive than the green ones, that's for sure. You love stuffed peppers, Debbie? Yes, my mom does too. I don't see her on here. She would probably be saying, I love bell peppers. I wish I did. Okay, so now we've got a Whisper White stitched circle. This is the second largest. And we're going to put these guys with dimensionals, of course. And we're going to put one like this. Oh, wait. Hold there. Hold a second. We got to do the, the burlap. Almost forgot. I'm going to cut a piece of burlap like that. And I just felt like it needed to be a little more narrow and a little more, oh, I don't know, like you know, rustic looking. So I cut one off and I did that. And then I also cut another one off here. Hi everybody, thanks for joining me, I appreciate it. And then we'll just put this down here and you can use Terran tape or Tombow if you like Tombow, but I'm gonna use my Fast Fuse. All right, so let's do the yellow pepper there or the orange, the yellow orange and the red one like that kind of, kind of pointed in at themselves. Then I have pre-cut one of our little words from the well-written stamp set. This is thanks. Um, now I recorded a clean recording of all of these um, earlier today. They'll be on YouTube later tonight. But one thing I was saying is that, you know, this, I made this a thank you card because I seem to need a lot of thank you cards um, and birthday cards lately too. So what I was saying is that the well-written framelits, which is what I'm giving away as our prize, but I won't be giving it away until I get back from Europe. Um, what I, you can, you know, change the sentiment. This could be a thanks. This could be a hello. This could be a happy birthday. This could be, I don't know, nothing. You could leave a word off of it and just have a general card, whatever you need it to be. So don't feel like you ha you're locked into whatever sentiment I chose. Did you guys see that? I used the fine tip glue pen and I didn't make a mess. Yes, I know. It's a good day. All right, now we're gonna take some linen thread and I'm gonna double it, which means just taking a piece and folding it in half. I do a lot of double bows and I wanna take a second just to show you because people never really understand what I mean. So take two pieces like this and pretend like it's just one piece. I mean, it's really simple. All right, see, and then pull that and pull that and straighten it out and double bow. It just gives you a little little more, you know, it's a little fuller. All right. All right, now we need a glue dot. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. And I'm gonna put this just right down here under that, okay? Now let's bring over our soft suede card base and we're gonna make some polka dots. And you might not have noticed what I was using, but it's the avocado pit. Hello, a circle. We, you know, I don't know who I was. I think it was at my team meeting. We were talking about, you always just need a circle stamp. Not always, but sometimes you just need a circle, right? And so here we go. Circle, avocado pit. Perfect. It's going to make this cute little polka dot background. Adding, um, Ooh, I don't know where that came from. Um, soft suede ink on soft suede cardstock just creates a pattern background easily. One more, right there. So cute. Okay, now this paper, I just moved it, here it is. This is a tiny piece of that pressed petal designer series paper. We used it last week with the wood grain. If you guys haven't checked this paper out, you need to look at it because at first glance, I was like, mm, not really my thing, but I love it. Um, wood grain, I don't necessarily love the f more photographic sides, but I love the other side. This is like newsprint. And when I put it down, it just reminded me of the farmer's market, you know, where people are using newspaper and, you know, just little baskets and things to put your, your stuff in that you get. And I thought that's perfect. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. It's like a bow on steroids, Christine. Yes. You took the words right out of my mouth. Well, I didn't actually say that, but that's exactly right. 
It's like a bow on steroids. You can do that with all your twine. I mean, you can do it with your ribbon too. Ta-da, done, easy card, right? Super easy. And now I have three of them, yay. You know what, I, look, I put that lower than that. Hmm, I think I like it lower. See on the circle? I like the circle sticking out. Okay, project number one. Now, today I'm using a lot of the same stamps over and over. So I've got to, let's see, am I using that one? Yes. So I've got to make sure I don't put them back. Am I using that? Yes. I'm talking to myself. Sorry. Addie was very nervous about being on Facebook Live. She talks about being a YouTuber constantly. She talks about her YouTubers constantly. And I said, hey, today, come and do this. And she was like, mm, I don't want to do it. And I said, hey, you know what? This is good practice. Oh, YouTube is everything to them these days. Hey, guys, remind me. Oh, I have some other things that I didn't end up using, and I want to show you. I'm going to put these over here. Hopefully, I'll remember to show you those. Okay, next project. I have worked myself into a tiny little square on my table. Why do I do that? All right, so the next project is a face mask gift holder. Does that make sense? An avocado face mask. I went to Target and I went aisle by aisle in the beauty section. I said, I know there's avocado things over here. And there were a ton. And you saw one yesterday or day before yesterday that I posted on my blog. Here's another one. And I actually ordered some things from Amazon that I didn't end up using, but I'll show you them at the end. Um, it has a little thing, um, avocado oatmeal clay facial mask. Now this is from CVS and I see right there, CVS. I linked it on my blog. Unfortunately, it said available in stores only. Um, so if you have a local CVS, and they had a ton of different masks. So if you have a local CVS, you'll have to get it there, but do not fear you can go to um i mean all the places this one is actually from target i think you'd have to make it a little bit bigger i didn't like the way that this one looked compared to that one but this one's from target um avocado and argon hair mask bath and body works has an avocado hair mask but the two stores here were out of it and i couldn't get it in time i was uh, frustrated Okay, so let's make the holder, all right? We're gonna do two pieces of crumb cake cardstock. And remember the measurements are right here on the PDF. Let me grab my Simply Scored and I'll tell you the sizes. Uh, yes, Andrea, I'm glad you said that. Her niece's 14th birthday. Um, so what I was thinking is that these would be great party favors for a bridal shower for like a, t a teen or a tween, like if you're having a, um, you know, like a spa birthday, those are really popular. So these would make great favors or just, you know, again, I always go back to the teachers, a fun little treat for a teacher or whoever. Everybody likes to spoil themselves, right? So give them a little hair mask, that's fancy. Okay, first piece of crumb cake is four and a fourth by seven and three fourths. We're gonna score it at two inches and at two and a fourth. And then the second piece, a new mom, Andrea, look at you, you're on fire. Yes, that's a great idea. Um, the second piece is four and a fourth by five and three fourths. I'm looking at my notes to make sure, yes, five and three fourths. And we're just gonna score this one at one, all right? Now, if you watch my other recording, I did things kind of out of order. So hopefully today I'll remember to do things not out of order. We're actually gonna adhere these together. And one, one thing I like to do, cause I don't know guys, but I am not very precise when I cut my stuff. So sometimes my paper's a little bit, you know, like a hair too big. So just to make sure that that doesn't show if that is the case, I'm gonna cut those corners right there, okay? Like that, put some adhesive, and we're just going to adhere that to the back, okay? Um, the one sheet of cardstock was not, and look, I am a little bit off. One sheet of cardstock was not long enough to make this. So that's why we're piecing two pieces together, basically to make just a matchbook, really, okay? Um, okay, now we're going to take 
this die right here. This is uh, from the Magnolia die set. This is my favorite die in the Magnolia die set. It's not called Magnolia die set. What is it called? The M Magnolia memory dies. And it's a an edge die that's gonna create a little fancy um, border edge on the front flap, okay? So get your die cut machine and put this in. We're gonna, remember, we're gonna do this front part. And one thing that I learned is that my natural inclination is to to do it like like this, right? Now is that, now I'm, now I'm gonna confuse myself. No, my natural inclination was to do it like this. But no, that's not right, because it's gonna cut a straight edge here. So put the straight edge down at the bottom, like that, all right? Center it and we'll just run it through. Uh-oh, here comes Charlie, he's on the move. The kids are out in the cul-de-sac. He hears some excitement. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? This die alone is, if, you're, if the Magnolias haven't convinced you yet, that die alone is worth buying it. Okay, so now we're going to put this little piece of paper. We're gonna staple this in a minute. Let me think about how I wanna do this. It really doesn't matter which way you do it. We're gonna staple the mask in like this, and we're gonna adhere this to cover the staples, but we've gotta put a little hole here. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna, we're gonna put two holes to put our brads. All right, so one right here, and I'm just going to poke a hole with my, and I don't have my piercing mat, um, don't poke your fingers. Um, right here with your take your pick tool. Now I want to do another one about right here. So I'm going to poke that through like that. Okay. Now before I put this on, I'm going to come over here. I'm making this way complicated just because I don't want my staples to show. Okay. So there I've done that. Now we'll put that, we'll put those back on in a second so they match. Get your avocado. Hi, Lisa. Thanks, Darcy. See, I get distracted. I start looking at your comments and I get distracted. All right, so we put that in there and we're just gonna staple. Nothing fancy, just a stapler. And then, oh, I stapled it. I shouldn't have stapled it. Well, I guess you have to, right? Because you have to put the brad through. Well, I was trying to simplify it. Oh, well. I'll show you how I did it the first time. It works. All right, so get your brads. These are the metallic brads, and they're all different. You can see, um, and any of them will work. I used the smaller ones last time. Let's use some of the, the bigger ones this time. What color is that? Rose gold, and they're, they're matching brads. There we go. Okay, so get it ready. Stick it in, whoa, oh, did I lose it? Well, pooey. All right, let's try it again. Live TV, here's one, here's one that matches. All right, put that in. And you know what, I like to loosen that a little bit. That way, when I go down here, I can, I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing, but I'm opening it, opening it in there. There we go like that, okay? Now that, and that, and that. But before we close it, this is another thing I forgot. I was just, I don't know. I wasn't thinking straight when I was making, well, what happened is I had major, major video problems this morning. I cut paper wrong, scored paper wrong, had to restart all that. So then I was already, bleh, couldn't, couldn't figure it out. Okay, so this tiny heart, let me point it out is from the set we used last week, right here. Now, if you don't have the stamp set, look through all your stamps. I'm sure you have a heart somewhere. All right, and I like this little tiny one, and I'm just gonna do kind of a, a sprinkling of hearts diagonally. Diagonally, diagonally. There we go, okay? There we go, now, Thanks for sharing, hi Amy. Um, grab your Whisper White twine, and I'm just gonna 
we've got to kind of loosen that brad up a little bit make some space so i wrapped it around there and then i'm going to wrap it in a figure eight i actually think i like these bigger brads better than the smaller ones because that's, that was a little bit easier to do okay so there you have that closure that fancy closure now let's stamp the avocados now my friend Rhonda said she laughed when she saw my avocado box. Rhonda, I doubt she's watching. Rhonda said she laughed. I don't know how to take that. But let me tell you, right now we are fans of avocados here. Oh, wrong color. We love avocados. I'm using old olive, but that's not the color we want because that paper, which I did mention, is... Uh, Granny Apple Green from the Brights DSP stack. If I haven't convinced you guys to get the, the DSP stacks yet, oh my gosh, put them on your birthday list. You need them. Here it is. Anyway, so she laughed at my avocado box and then I told her what was in it and her daughter loves avocados and I said she would love that. I may have to mail it to her. Um, but like we seriously love avocados here, love them. Um, me, I love guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> but my family eats avocados just by the slice. Um, and oh, I didn't do that very well. And um, so there's that polka dot we used. So yeah, maybe Andrea, we'll see. I don't know. She, she says she laughed because she thought it was adorable. She probably, well, what she said is that she didn't know how to use the stamp set or something like that. She, did, she didn't know how she would use it. And then um, she laughed when she saw my box. Well, I thought it was so cute because an avocado, like I said, is very healthy. And I Googled it and I found out that, now I hope I get this right, the avocado is the Aztec symbol for love or something like that. <laughs> I Googled, you know, like um, avocado meanings, um, but it, it is it's the symbol for love. And so I thought, well, yeah. Okay, not only is it that, but it's super good for you. It's really healthy. And they put it in all these health things for your hair. You know, my doctor always says to put some avocado in your smoothie so you get some healthy fats. So I'm sorry for those of you who weren't fans of the avocado. You should be. <laughs> okay, so this one I kind of screwed up the stamping. So we're going to put this one in the back. Oh, I don't like how that is, but oh well, we're just going to go with it. Um, and then this one right here. This is a stitched label cut with the stitched label dies. And so is the next one. Now the sentiment, I will admit, where's the stamp set? I'm not a huge fan of this, of the sentiments although this one from my garden i have done seed packets before as like a in a little card and those are so cute and i try not to do that this time because i feel like i've done it before but that would be um a great you know from my garden like here's some seeds from my garden even though you bought them um, but you could also if you give away i know this time of year especially some of you have tons of vegetables in your garden if you give them away you can make cute little tags a perfect day good luck good health and happiness mm, not sure about that i mean that's Okay, and then wishing you a perfect day would be good. So I wasn't fully, totally, madly in love with those sentiments. So I pulled from what I have, and this is a wish for everything. It's a two um, set, two stamps. What am I trying to say? There's two cases. It's so big, it fits in two cases. And this one, just a little reminder that you are loved. So back to the avocado being the symbol of love. There you go. That's how I decided on that sentiment. Oh, I know you guys may just be like, oh my gosh, Erica. But I was thinking a shout, like a bridal shower favor. I don't know, it's kind of fun, it's kind of different, something they can use and it's not junk, you know, like candy. I do, I, I hear from you sometimes, you've got some of you say, can you try to make things that aren't candy? gifts that, you know, treats that include things that aren't candy. This, by the way, is Crush Curry ink. And this little piece is also from the stitched labels dies. These two come in the same set. So I hear you. I just really like candy. <laughs> so, but it is good not to have candy because then I eat it. I, confession, I bought some, I don't know if you guys have seen these Oreo, um, like candy bars. 
if you have seen them, don't buy them because you can't stop eating them. I bought them to make a project and I ate it. Now, granted, I ate it over several days, but still, I ate it. I have to be very careful of what treats I bring into this office because my self-control is very, very low. This ribbon, you guys, is the crinkled seam binding. We only have it in one color, which is crushed curry. I don't know, is Anne Marie on here? I think crushed curry is one of those she hates. I like it for certain things, especially in the fall. Um, but it's awesome. It's super light. It ties easily. It's not going to bulk your projects up. And I am praying that Stampin' Up! brings it out in more colors. We had seen binding years ago, but this is a little bit different. It's just very light and nice. Okay, so there we go. Boom. On there with some dimensionals. And you've got a nice little party favor. Lisa, I love the granny apple green. Oh, Lisa, me too. And I'm not, green is like way down on my list of favorite colors, but I love granny apple green. I love it. Okay, wait, we're not done. Rewind. How about a few gold pearls? These are the metallic pearls. And sometimes if you take your pick tools, having a good day, <laughs> it will pick up the pearls. You know, I try to make that putty last too long. I think that's my problem. And then it loses its stick and the pearls are all over the place. There we go. See, that's how it's supposed to work. Boom, boom, boom. Now, you guys, I'm leaving town next week, but I will be here in time to cut these for you if you wanna put your order in by Monday at midnight. Tuesday, I'm finishing everything up and I will cut and pack and ship all the make and takes to anybody who places an order um, on Tuesday afternoon, okay? I will get it done, promise, before I leave. And you guys, I only have two spots left in my paper share for six by six paper. If you want those, please message me. Two spots left, that's it. All right, that's it. You guys, what do you think? Am I, am I changing some of your minds about this stamp set? I really like it. I mean, it's what, the third stamp set that I picked to use out of the catalog? It's, it's so cute, look at these. Wouldn't these be cute in like a little basket like this and tell your guests, take one. Sorry, it's very cute. Where are my cute baskets? Look, here's one. One of my old like rustic baskets. You just had these sitting out as a party favor. I'm sorry, it's adorable. Cute, 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 cute. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who I'm trying to convince, but I think it's cute. I wonder how many times I have said that today. All right, let's move all of this off and get to the final project. Can you guess what's in here? Can you guess? I already said it on my blog, so some of you may know. I was about to say I'll give a price to anybody who can guess, but I've already I've already said it on my blog. You might be surprised or you might not. All right, let me switch these out and I will get it and bring it over my tray. Hold on, I'm just trying to clean it. Mary, you like my enthusiasm? Well, good. I'm getting ready to go on vacation, that's why. <laughs> I'm getting ready to go on vacation. Okay, no guesses? Has anybody made a guess yet? I may have, oh, veggie mix, okay, Irene. One thing I was really trying to do was to use this stamp set, and I found um, wasabi peas, like dried wasabi peas, have you guys seen those? But it was like in a big bag. I couldn't find any little snack bags. So that didn't work. And then I was like, oh, wait, but I really like the tomato stamp. And then I thought, oh, that's going to be hard. What kind of snack can you, you know, have that's tomato flavored? Hmm, so I was thinking, I was thinking. And then I remembered that my kids love these. Harvest Snaps. If you guys eaten these, you can get them at Target, Walmart, wherever. Um, they come in a lot of, uh, lots of flavors, including there's a tomato basil flavor that's very good. We like the Caesar flavor. They're like kind of like a chip, you know, they're salty. Um, I mean, they're not flat like a chip, like maybe like a cheese puff, but they're, they're healthy and they're lower in carbs than chips. So my kids actually really like these. So, ta-da, that's what I decided to use. Now, I ordered these 
from, have you guys heard of boxed.com? It's kind of like um, Costco online. You know, you buy um, bulk items and I think if you spend more than $49, your shipping is free. So, th so I got those, I actually ordered these before I had even, even planned for this. I, we had these. Um, so then I went on Amazon. I couldn't find them in this size. It's 0.75. I found them in a bigger size, but these are 0.75. But I did find there's a, like a brand, like an Amazon brand that was very similar. And they were 0.75 um, ounces. So I linked those over on my blog if you like this idea. If you're looking for like a healthy snack to give out at a class or a meeting or whatever, that's, um, I linked both of them up, the original ones and the other ones I found on Amazon, okay? You gotta, you gotta try these. Usually they're in the vegetable area, kind of like over, I don't know, both our Walmart and Target have a, like a dried nuts, dried fruit area, and these are there. And they're good. They're one of those things that you can eat too many because you think they're healthy and you're like, oh, I ate the whole bag. So don't do that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stamp like, a little vegetable medley. And look, they're different. Every one that you do is gonna be different, okay? All right, let's do that because it's gonna need some time to dry. And I had some paper here for us to use. Here we go, some grid paper. We have new watercolor paper, you guys. I love watercolor paper. I use it a lot for, obviously, watercoloring. By the way, since I'm talking about that, let me just show you I was messing around with our new pigment sprinkles and, and look at that gorgeous watercolor paper is what I used, okay? So here it is, it looks like this. It's smaller than what we had, but I think it just is nicer and I can't really put into words why. I'm not an expert on watercolor paper. I should ask my mother, she is. Um, but this is what it looks like, fluid 100 watercolor paper. I remember seeing the words cold press maybe, but I don't even know what any of that means. Archival cotton watercolor paper. Anyway, that's what I'm using. And if you haven't ordered watercolor paper since a new catalog came out, that's what it will look like, okay? All right, we're gonna start with the tomatoes. Well, now I have both dogs in here. I don't know, usually Mac is not in here, but he's here. They're sniffing around. All right, real red. <clears throat> and oh wait old olive we're gonna start with the stem of the tomatoes I'm not a tomato eater either you guys why why don't I like all these vegetables and you know what's funny is that my parents are big vegetable eaters my dad grew tomatoes for many years ate them right out of the garden I'm trying to look for my sample so I can remember what it looked like okay um I wish I I wish I liked tomatoes I'm not a tomato fan not an, not a um bell pepper fan I do like avocado if it's I don't know it's a texture thing it's got to be like you know smashed up with guacamole <laughs> that's still a vegetable um, okay now here are the tomatoes and they will line right up with those little these are those cute little vine ripe tomatoes you know I don't know our grocery store sells them on the little vine the little ones all right, then we'll do this one. All right, now let's get our bell pepper back over here. And did I clean it? I did. Okay, we're gonna start with Mango Melody. Um, I keep forgetting where my sample is. Okay, right here. I'm gonna do this one right there. And this one, uh-oh, there's movement on the dog bed. Charlie's getting his, his hackles are coming up. A dog in the neighborhood barked, so he's got to go tell him what's up. All right, let's clean it. I was supposed to have a groomer come today for the stinky dogs, and she didn't come. This is the second time this has happened, and I'm not very happy about it. All right, let's do a red bell pepper here, and I think that's the only one, the only red bell pepper. You can do this, you know however you want. I'm just copying what I did before. Now here are those peas. I like peas, I will say. <laughs> There's one vegetable Erica likes. I like peas. I, I like um, green beans. I like carrots. I like salad. I like when things are mixed in a salad. Artichokes. I really like the salad dressing, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> I will eat the salad too. Okay, I'm talking too much. I'm distracting myself, trying to make myself laugh. Okay, there we go, the stem. Now, there's a hole there, I don't like that, but that's okay, we're gonna cover that up in a minute. Now here comes the avocado, one right there, and I'm doing um, old olive. You know what, we're gonna do this one sideways to make it fit. They don't all have to go the same way. I feel like, did I forget one? No, I got them all, right? I did. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> go somewhere else, Charlie. A car drove through the cul-de-sac. Bark, bark, bark. The pea stamp is cute, Darcy, I agree. It's cute, and it's really, you could, out of all of them, the distinctive, you know, the 3D or whatever, the, oh, I, why are my words so hard today, you guys? It looks good, the pea looks good. Now, I don't like the fact that that's a hole, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this right here and this right here to cover it, so we're not gonna worry too much about it. Now, I stamped them all like that, and I thought, mm, okay, that looks fine, however, I really want it to just be more of a, like a watercolor look. So I'm gonna take my spritzer, just water in here, and I'm gonna spritz it a little bit, and I'm gonna set it aside, and then I'm gonna look at it and spritz it some more and set it aside, um, because if you don't, if you do too much water, <laughs> this is what you're gonna end up with. This was, I did one ahead of time for today's video, and I was way too heavy handed with the water. Can you see the difference here? See how this one just has a little bit of spreading ink? This is my favorite one. This is the first one I actually did. See, I like how the water just kind of goes out a little bit. This is a little too much. That's like a storm. There was a big storm in the garden. We don't want that. So learn from my mistakes and take your spritzer and I really wanna do more, but I'm gonna not, look, I already see the, the color coming out there. I love that. Um, the spritzer doesn't do a whole lot of water unless you, you know, make it. One more, and then I'm gonna stop. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Now we're gonna set that side aside to dry. What I really like too is look how bold and vivid the colors look when you get them wet. Really pretty. Okay, so set that aside to dry. Let's get this out of here and we'll make the box. Now the box is just like the other one. I, this is the third time this week I've had to I've made a box that's too big for one sheet of cardstock. So just like the other ones, this one is the same. You're gonna need two pieces. And let me see which pieces I need here. This is the one you're gonna really need the, the, the PDF for. Lots of measurements, okay? Okay, we're gonna start with the big one. This is Old Olive 7 and 5 eighths by seven inches. And we're gonna score the long side at half an inch, one and a fourth, six and three eighths, and three eighths is just one, two, three ticks past six, and then seven and an eighth. Okay, then turn it and score the short side at three fourths and six and a fourth. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Now, this is the front of our box and it is five by seven, and we're just gonna score the long side at three fourths and four. Nope, let me look, make sure I'm getting there. Oh, did I score the right, what? What am I looking at? Six and a fourth, my gosh. The wheels are coming off, third project every time. <laughs> okay, now this is gonna be the front and this is gonna be the back of our box. So grab your bone folder and I do believe I have mine and burnish all those lines while I'm doing this. Debbie, Debbie, did you see you won a prize? Hopefully you were here earlier, Debbie Hughes. Debbie, you're saying you didn't like this stamp set, but now you're gonna have to buy it. Yes, that's what I was hoping for. I saw people saying it was their least favorite set, and I was like, what is happening? And then the challenge was accepted, and hopefully I have changed y'all's mind. Okay, so now the let's see the long side this needs to be tall like portrait and this is going to be the front lid that folds down and the bottom lid that folds up okay so we're going to cut out the four corners cut them all out all right now decide which is your top oh hello we forgot a corner 
So decide which is the top and which is the bottom. We're gonna say this is the top, okay? So come up here and cut this corner off and this corner off. Then take your scissors and snip these score lines right here on these squares. Then cut the squares in half. Okay, so now we've got these little half squares and that's because they're just, it's just a flap to fold in to give us a smooth line. So don't worry too much about those. Now I'm also gonna cut the corners off of these. That helps them go in the box a little bit better. Okay, I don't like the way that one looks. <laughs> it doesn't matter, see, they're little. Now come down here, and let me remember how I did this. I have my, okay, yeah. Now down at the bottom, this is the one I screwed up this morning, so now I'm like worried. Cut those, okay? So this is what you've got. This is the top, and this is the bottom. Now, we're gonna put that on the back, because that's actually the back of the box. And we're gonna take the front of the box, fold these, and we're just gonna adhere this like that. Can you see how this box is coming together? All right, so put your super strong adhesive like tear and tape or Tombow or Fast Fuse on the inside of these and we're going to adhere this like this. Okay, so there we have it. Now fold it over, and if you fold that down flat, it will go perfectly where it needs to go. And there's our box. Does that look like a box maybe that you've seen, like a cereal box? Now tuck this in. Actually, we need to cut this one at an angle just a little bit too. Now we're gonna adhere this one, so we don't really need to worry too much about these guys. These little flaps just kind of fill the gap of where your paper is. It's going to, you know, if we cut those flaps off, then when we cut, when we put this in, there would be like this weird gap right here and I don't like it. So these are just aesthetically helping you, and I didn't cut enough of this one off. These are just aesthetically helping your box look more cohesive. Like those big words? All right, so the bottom, fold those in. We're gonna put adhesive on the outside of this flap because this is the bottom and we don't we don't need the bo the bottom to open so put some adhesive in there fold it in and push it all right and there's our box all right and it's going to close like that all right see how that works so let's put our harvest snaps inside and close our box. And I will tell you guys that a lot of times my boxes don't always stay closed. So what I do, this is a little secret, and I don't know, maybe the more professional box makers don't have to do this, but where did my glue dots go? Well, I was gonna show you, here it is. So I will just take a, a glue dot, fold it in half, Okay, and just put it right there, just to give it a little bit of stick, but nothing that's like permanent. All right, and it'll hold that closed. <laughs> it will hold that closed. Stay closed box. Okay, now, there's our box. Let's go back to our piece. It's probably not totally dry, but look, it's perfect. I like how it just bleeds out a little bit. I might wanna add a little bit more water there, and a little bit more water there, but I'm not going to because we're making a video. We're going to uh, adhere this piece to a piece of Mossy Meadow. Mossy Meadow looks really good with old olive. This piece measures, the, the watercolor paper was five by four and a half and the Mossy Meadow was four and a fourth. No, scratch that. The Mossy Meadow piece was five and a fourth by four and three fourths. Remember, it's all right here, you guys. Okay, now we're gonna do something else to this. Let's see, where did that paper go? You guys have seen me do this before. I felt like we just needed a little more splatter, a little more watercolor mess, so I got my Mossy Meadow Stamp and Blend and the lid, this is the brush tip, and I'm just gonna splatter it to give it some more, you know, some more texture. I don't know if that's the right word, but that's the word we're going with. Look at that, cute. 
Now, what time is it? Oh, it's three. I don't have to pick any kids up today. Did I throw that piece away? I was going to, well, all right, we'll just do it real quick. I thought I had saved the piece from this morning, but of course we're gonna use the buffalo check with this. Of course we are. So get your, just a old olive piece. I almost stuck those together. I don't know if you guys saw me. <laughs> I had almost picked both of those up at the same time. That would have been a disaster. Magnets like to stick together. All right, let's see. Okay, old olive ink on old olive cardstock, buffalo check. And I will tell you that my, I noticed this morning that my old olive ink pad needs to be re-inked. So it's gonna take me a couple of times to do this. And the reason I like to use the Stamparatus is because when you stamp it and you're like, meh, it didn't stamp very well. You just open it back up add some more ink and do it again. The magnets are holding your paper in place. One more time for good measure. Let's make it really dark. When you're stamping on colored cardstock, you need more ink than you do with a Whisper White. All right, there we go. Now, I'm gonna need that in a minute. Hopefully I won't lose it. We're gonna cut this down to I believe my measurement says, and I, you know what, I didn't, I did fix it on the PDF, but I didn't print it out. We're gonna cut this down, and I believe it's one and a half by however long our Mossy Meadow piece is. Is that right? Yep, that looks about right. All right, so let's come back over here. We're gonna put this right across, cover up that hole that we have there. You know what, let's just do this so we only have to cut it on one side. There we go, get your scissors or your trimmer, trim that off. Now let's get that linen thread again, wherever it went. Hmm. Well, I thought I had two of them, but I guess I didn't. So we'll get this one back off of this tray. Get your linen thread. And I'm going to hold a piece out like this, and then I'm gonna wrap it once and twice, and kind of crisscrossing it so that it makes an X. Let me unravel this a little bit, okay? So can you see that, how it kind of makes, I don't know, it just crosses over each other. And we're going to, I hope I gave myself enough of this on this end. Oh, this feels weird. I'm doing it with the wrong hand. This needs to be over here. Okay, there, now we go. And let's tie a bow. Let's tie a bow. <laughs> Sometimes I have to tell my fingers to do what I want them to do twice, like my kids. What is happening? My fingers were like, vacation. I thought we were going to Greece. I thought we were going to Rome. What are we doing? You're making us work. There we go. All right, so tie that. Then let's stamp the sentiment. And I'm using a piece of Whisper White that I cut with the, let me tell you the name of these. These are new, the detailed bands dies. Aren't they beautiful? I plan on using these a lot. Um, this one right here, right? That's the one that we used. If you don't have that one, you can use other ones that you have. Um, but I do like the shape of it. It's very different. All right, good health. No, good luck, good health and happiness. Right there. Since this is a healthy snack, and we're gonna get the banner, and the banner is going to be in soft sea foam, and it's watercolory, so it's supposed to be kind of blotchy like that. And wishing you in old olive. Okay. Okay. We're almost done. We're almost done. I don't have to pick any kids up today, so I don't have to rush. Couple of dimensionals. 
I like to make those kind of separate. Put that right there. And then last but not least, I feel like we needed just a little something. Let's get that bow perfect. So I looked at my embellishments and what did I see? I have no idea because they're not here. They're here, hold on. They're here, they're here. Oh my goodness. Where's Denise? Denise needs to be here cleaning up after me. Well, pooey. Hold on. Hold, please. I have some more. These are the Bird Ballad Trinkets. And they're actually poured out into my embellishment container. So I'm just going to grab one. But they're the Bird Ballad. Look at my fingers. Don't flame me. I have inky fingers. The Bird Ballad um, Trinkets. They are these little metal trinkets, embellishments that are so cute. They, there's a key, there's a leaf, there's a flower, which we're using. And what's the other one? A key, a leaf. Oh, a little bow. That is so cute. It's tiny. All right, so there we go. Let's trim that a little bit. I think I made this project look a whole lot harder than it really is. I should have done it first before I lost all my composure. Ah, let's put this on top and Ta-da! Those would be cute at a, what if you sold those at a farmer's market? Huh? Those would be cute in that little basket, right? Hmm, very cute. Okay, so you guys, there we have it. Let's look at them. One, two, and three. There we go. Now let's look at the, let's look at the box that my friend Rhonda said she laughed at, because that's what friends do, right? Here's our box. <laughs> and did you notice the pit is a heart? Um, hello, yeah, so cute. Okay, now, so those were the four projects that I came up with um, for garden goodness. Now I told you I found a few more things um, that I didn't end up using. This is avocado and sugar lip scrub from Amazon. It was like $5 and look, it's like an avocado. <laughs> Oh my God, that's so cute. I may still have to come up with something for this, but it was on um, it was on Amazon. Just type in avocado lip scrub. My teenager, I'm sure she's gonna be stealing this from me. Very cute. I should send that to Rhonda's daughter too. And then I showed you these. These were from Target. And then this was another one from Amazon, avocado and citrus soap. I almost used that one, I decided not to. Okay, so don't feel like this stamp set is not one that you can use. It's very affordable. It is $17. It's one of our cheapest stamp sets that we have. Um, and I have just shown you four ways how to use it. And I'm sure that there will be countless other ways um, on Pinterest, on the internet, in the months to come. Now, let's remember the things that we need to remember, host code right here, host code right here. Any order between now and Monday at midnight that uses this host code that's over $30, I will send you these three make and takes in the mail on Tuesday for free. I will be leaving next week. Um, I will be gone for two weeks and there will be no live Facebook Friday next Friday or the following Friday, but there will be a recorded Facebook Friday next Friday and the following Friday. So make sure you find it. It will be here on Facebook, hopefully, and on my blog and on YouTube, okay? And I will have six projects for you while I'm gone. Um, I will be back live on July 8th, what is that, 19th? Wow, July 19th, that feels like a really long time from now. All right, and I will show you all my goodies from the trip, I will show you my swap, and I will tell you all the details. I'll show you the holiday catalog because we get the holiday catalog too. All right, you guys have a wonderful weekend. Please let me know if you have questions. And uh, yeah, Catherine, Facebook Live, not live. Um, it should be called Facebook, not live. Facebook Friday, not live. Anyways, you guys have a wonderful weekend. I will see you in a few weeks. And thanks for everything. You guys are the reason I'm going to Greece and I am more grateful than you know. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye.